Did you know that there are four basic but profound steps that lead to eternal life? Stay tuned, we'll discover them together. Welcome to The Shepherd's Call with Christian Berdahl. Shepherd's Call Ministry is dedicated to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the three angels' messages, calling to the hearts of God's people through sacred music, challenging messages, and Christian media production. In this series, you will discover practical Bible-based teachings for everyday living. Listen for The Shepherd's Call in today's message, Four Steps to Eternal Life. Hello friends, today's message is one of my personal favorites and we here at Shepherd's Call Ministry have discovered that it is one of your favorites too. I have had countless requests by people around the world, literally, asking me to re-record this message separate from the Distraction Dilemma Music Seminar, where it first became popular. So today, we are going to rewrap the Four Seeds of Christianity into a new version entitled, Four Steps to Eternal Life. Amen. Before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to come before you and to worship and to study. And so, Father, we ask that we would listen to and we would, we would digest what you're trying to teach us. We ask for the Holy Spirit to be our teacher today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to start with one of the most powerful texts in all of the Bible, Revelation 12:11, And then we will circle back around to the same text at the end, and hopefully you will see the four steps that perhaps you've never seen before in Revelation 12:11. Let's go ahead and take a look at that and break it down a little bit. And they overcame him. Now, they refers to us, and they overcame him, that would be the devil, by the blood of the Lamb, now that's Jesus, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. This scripture is describing a people that have fully embraced the true Christian life. They have guaranteed their place with God forever by embracing the four steps to eternal life. The first step for success as a Christian is to have a vital connection to Jesus. Now, let's take a look at this simple slide. We need to have a vital connection to Christ. And now, understand, this is the foundation for the entire Christian walk. Connection is the first step. And this is the absolute foundation for each one of us. Let's look at John 15, starting in verse 4. Now, understand, this is Jesus talking. I love this. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Now, Jesus is the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Amen. So here, Jesus is telling us that we cannot bear Christian fruit in our lives unless He's allowed by our free will choice to abide in us and us in Him. Some other words for abide are obey, or follow, or keep to, or to persist. With those definitions in your mind, or different words in your mind, let's read verses 5 to 8 now. It paints a deeper picture of what Jesus is trying to illustrate for us. I am the vine. So he describes it now. I'm the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him. Amen the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. The only way to bear much fruit and glorify God is to abide or connect to the vine, Jesus Christ. That's what this is telling us. You can't do anything for me if you're not connected to me. Why? Because I need to be connected to you to live out my life within you. 
So the first foundational step for a fruit-bearing, God-honoring Christian life is to connect to Jesus. The first step is connection. Without a vital connection to God, the Christian life can't even be established. Now, don't misunderstand me. We can become religious. We can embrace the traditions of our parents or our culture or go to church, be in committee meetings and still not have Christ, the hope of glory in us. We can be really busy for Jesus, we think, but we, we can do this without having Him in us. So how do we connect in a very real way to our loving, saving, merciful, just God? Well, in the book of James, we find a short but powerful verse, James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Very short, but very powerful. Now, this is actually what we would call a conditional promise of God. Submit yourselves. If you do that, then God will do this. If we submit, and the big word here is if we submit or yield to God, then we will have the power to resist the devil and he will flee from us. Is this making sense so far? Amen. It all starts with surrendering our will to God. This verse, however, it assumes that the reader already has a vital connection to God and has decided or chosen to submit or yield to Him. We should never blindly surrender our will over to anyone, including God, without first being informed. I mean, would you agree? Of course. God Himself says in Isaiah 118, Come now and let us reason together. Here, God is saying, look, come and let's reason together. In other words, let's think. You see, God wants us to use our minds and to decide for ourselves. Psalm 34, 8 says this, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. So, taste and see. That means you've got to experience God, right? Amen. And when you taste, you're going to see God is good. If we never taste, then we will never know that He's good. And when we look into Scripture and we find a long-suffering Creator that truly has the best interest in mind for His children and is more willing than our own parents to give us good gifts, everything that we need to get through this life with grace, friends, then it's going to impact your heart. Jeremiah 29, uh, starting in verse 11, says this, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of, I'm going to destroy you. No, thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search, with, search for me with all your heart. God simply invites us to learn of Him and what He has in store for us, learn of His character, and then choose if we want His help, if we want His salvation, if we want His abiding in us. The choice is up to each one of us. God never forces. So how do we surrender? It's so simple. It really is simple. Through reading, and studying the Word of God, and when we hear Him speaking to us through His Word or the impressions of the mind, then we can choose, do we want to surrender? One-way communication, God speaking to us. But by us praying to Him, we create two-way communication, the most effective and affective connection two can have. And when we have communion with God, everything starts to change. We've begun to come to God and learn His will. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 declares, and of course, this is my absolute favorite scripture, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. God is not going to saddle you with all the cares of the world, but rather help you through everything that comes your way. 
He's actually able to change us from the inside out. Praise God for that. Messages to Young People, page 431, reveals more of what happens in us when we commune with our God. Communion with God encourages good thoughts, noble aspirations. Notice that. Communion with God has these fruits in your life. Good thoughts, noble aspirations, clear perceptions of truth, and lofty purposes of actions. Those who thus connect their souls with God are acknowledged by Him as His sons and daughters. They are constantly reaching higher and still higher, obtaining, a clear, obtaining clear views of God and of eternity, until the Lord makes them channels of light and wisdom to the world. Connection is the foundational step, my friends. We must connect our souls to God before we can ever be channels of light to the world. If there's no connection, no communion, then the entire Christian experience comes crumbling down. Now, the second step is built upon the foundation of connection. The second step is to commit our lives to Christ. Amen? So we commit our lives to Him. Number one, connect to Jesus. Number two, commit your life to Him. Now, what does it mean to commit? Sometimes we don't think these words through. It actually means to pledge, to set aside, to dedicate to. If I, for instance, save some money for a certain mission, I've actually saved that money and I set it aside. Amen? I, I have committed it for that purpose. And the Bible directs us to commit something, and let's read that in Psalm 37, 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Amen. When I commit my way to God, and I trust also in Him, He's going to bring it to pass. But notice, I need to make a commitment. But friends, that commitment's built on my connection. Do you see how this works? Amen. Why would we commit our way to God? Well, because we've invested quality time in connecting to Him and learning of Him and what He has done for us. And when we have a deep connection to God and the reality that He spared not His only begotten Son for our salvation, then our souls awaken from a spiritual slumber to embrace our new life that's hid in Christ. And when the connection is full and genuine, a desire will awaken within us to commit our lives to Him. For example, when I first met Kobe, the woman that I eventually married, praise God, I walked up to her, I introduced myself, and I said, Hello, my name's Christian. What's yours? Oh, Kobe. Well, hi, Kobe. Will you marry me? Now, <laughs> do you think that's what I did? Well, no way. And if I had, what should she have done? She should have run away, right? Of course. She would have never blindly married me. Well, why not? Because she didn't know me. We had not yet connected. We did not spend time together. So eventually I asked her out and we began to invest time getting to know each other and connecting. And eventually because our connection, listen, was genuine, we found that we actually liked each other. We learned that we could trust each other and welling up inside of both of us was a desire to spend more time with each other. Finally, I realized that I was, to use a term, in deep like with her. <laughs> and then she discovered that she was in deep like with me, and we discovered that we would never betray each other's confidence. Only at this point could we move forward to the commitment stage. It's the same with God. You see, Kobe and I cared for each other. We spent a lot of time together. And I realized that I loved her and she realized that she loved me. I asked her to marry me. Kind of scary, but also awesome because you're a little bit nervous there. But I asked her, will you marry me? I promised her that I would only be hers and that I would have no other lovers in the world. I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. The moment I made that commitment to her, certain things were now 
going to be different in my life. And they would never be the same. I was now going to deny every other woman in the world an intimate relationship with me. And at the moment that Kobe accepted my proposal, she made the same level of commitment to me. She was going to deny every other man in the world. Now, that's a commitment. We all want 100% commitment from our spouses, don't we? Because we each, want, we each want each other to be all in, just like we're all in. Now, this is a commitment we can trust when it's all in, right? We want nothing less than 100%. I mean, come on, am I right? Of course. So what happens today, though, is that far too many people, both young and old, they rush the connection phase of the relationship. They even get emotionally and sexually involved long before there's a deep commitment based on an even deeper connection. Now, these types of relationships have a very high rate of failure. In other words, they're kind of getting the cart before the horse. They're getting the commitment and a deeper level of commitment when there hasn't been a connection. So it's the same when it comes to our relationship with God. What if I said, I love God, but I have other gods. I have other lovers, if you will. Did you know that seven books of the Bible talk of this? The Bible warns that we should not go, quote, a whoring after other gods or other idols in the world. With our mouth, we say, I love you, God. But with our lives, we really say, I love the world more. So what's wrong here? Our choice to become a Christian, our commitment was not built on a deep foundational connection found in the Word of God. Perhaps we had an emotional connection to maybe some sort of worship service or a singer or whatever it may be, and then that went away so fast. So when the other, world, uh, the other lovers in the world started to call, we responded and we turned our back on God. We committed spiritual adultery. When we really love someone, based on the experience we've had with them, the connection that we've had with them, then we will want to spend time with them. What if I said, I love you, my wife. I love you, Kobe. But I never invested any time with her. Or what if I said, I love you, sweetheart. I only want to have other lovers, you know, 10% of the time. 90% for you, but 10% with other women. Should my bride accept that lame level of commitment? Of course not. Never. It would cause tremendous problems in our relationship. It would most likely end in divorce. Well, friends, it's the same with God. What if I profess to love God, but I go off with other lovers, other idols, and I cease to feed and grow my relationship with Him? It will end, eventually end in divorce. We will actually run away from God. We will serve Him the bill of divorce. And if we love God, we'll invest time into our relationship. And if we never try to learn of our God, how could we ever love Him? We won't. But a wonderful reality is that God has already chosen us. He wants us Problems and all. Let's look at 1 Peter 2.9. Ye are a, very important word, chosen generation. Who's chosen us? God has. A royal priesthood. God knows you're a sinner. Maybe you're backslidden or you're compromising your Christian values. Uh, you might have other lovers. And He knows even your deepest and darkest secrets that maybe even your mom, a good close friend, a spouse, or a pastor may not even know. He knows what's really going on in your head, in your heart. He knows if you're battling with even being a Christian anymore. But here's the most wonderful revelation, my friends. He has still chosen you, and He still wants you, and He has a plan for you, and He sees you not as you are, but what you can become in Him. He loves you 
and only desires the best for you. He can heal you and He can forgive you and He can convert you. No matter how perverse you have become, He can change you. Do you believe that? You won't if you don't get in the Word. Revelation, excuse me, Review and Herald, March 21, 1893. Having faith and confidence and trusting God, we have everything. Amen. And God will never betray our confidence. He is ever loving and patiently bears with our weaknesses and infirmities and is ever willing to forgive our perversities. Oh, thank God. Then, let us walk meekly, trustingly, and humbly before Him. Commit your way to Him. There it is, the key word. Commit your way to Him. Cast all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. Amen. 1 John 4.19 says we love Him because He first loved us. Amazing. God still chooses me. God still chooses you with all of our wretchedness. In fact, the amazing reality is He'll even take just that 90%. He will take you, listen, if all you can give Him is just 1% of your heart right now. He can work with that. We won't if we're in a, re in a relationship. We want 100%, but God goes, I'll work with the 1%. And He will work with you, and He will accept it. He will accept you as His bride. The beautiful truth is that God will forgive us, forgive all of our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He will not leave us where we are, but rather pick us up, dust us off, and walk with us and talk with us, and grow us up into His character and into His likeness. Lay Christian Berdahl in the dust and resurrect a new covenant-related Christian Berdahl that has Jesus Christ living within Him. This is the fruit of the Spirit, and He will bless this broken human being with His divine indwelling presence. And we begin to experience this new thing called the divine nature. My broken nature surrendered and saying, Lord, change me and the divine influence in my human being and I become, I, I can embrace a divine nature. I can become a new creature in Christ. Joshua 24, 15 says, If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God has chosen you. Have you chosen God? If you haven't, what prevents you? I mean, learn of God. And then, and only then, commit your life to Him. If you already know that you need God in your life, then choose this very minute, right now. Don't, don't wait till tomorrow, because you're stronger today than maybe you will be tomorrow. If you know you need God in your life right now, then today is the day of salvation. Right now, choose Him. Give your life to Him. Say, Lord, forgive me. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Now please, live your life through me. 2 Corinthians 6.17 Wherefore, come out. I say that like a sheep, right? Wherefore, come out from among them. You don't want to be like all the sheep of the world. Come out and be you separate, saith the Lord. Because all they want to do is pull you down anyway. Have you ever noticed that? When you start to become more like God, they go, oh yeah, you just watch. This. Oh, he just thinks he's better than everybody else. No, come away from all of that nonsense. Come away. You know, put the world behind you and the cross right in front of you. Come away from all the spiritual lovers and be ye separate. Let's look at Review and Herald. May 28, 1889. Let us commit our souls unto God as a faithful creator. Friends, He is a faithful creator. And stop worrying and fretting. Oh, that would be nice. God will help us to live above the things of this life and give us an abundance of good things to think about and to talk about. Let us come into the presence of Christ. Amen? He is cleansing the heavenly sanctuary. Let us enter there by faith. Provision has been made for our cleansing. A fountain has been opened up for sin and uncleanness. 
Ask in faith for the grace of God, and you will not ask in vain. You see, we have, because we have prayer, we have unlimited power because we have unlimited access to God. Unlimited access to God. And if we have taken the first step and connected to God, then, which of course then is supposed to lead us to committing our life to Him because the connection is real. Then, if we have already connected and we've committed our lives, then we're ready to actively commence the work of God. Amen? So we're connected, we're committed, and now we're commencing the work of God. Notice these steps. We're growing more. We've connected to Him, we've found Jesus, and we've decided to commit our life to Him, and we're thankful for what He's done for us, and then we're like, i got to go tell somebody. This is the third step that leads to eternal life with God. We only commence when we have strong commitment, which is built on the foundation of our connection to Him. Does that make sense? The third step in the Christian life is to commence the work of God. Commence means to what? Start. It means to move forward. Get the ball rolling. It's an action word. In fact, if you look at all three of these steps, they're all action words. Connect. That's something I need to do. I can do. Commit. That's a choice that I make. And I'm going to commence. That's the actions I'm going to take. You see, there's no room for us to be sitting around expecting God to do everything in my life, including making my personal choices for me. No, never. God will not do for us what we are perfectly able to do for ourselves. If we are healthfully connected, we're committed, and we're ready to tell somebody about what God has done for us, then friends, we are qualified to go. Review uh, in Herald, March 17, 1901. We show our faith in God by obeying His commands. Faith is always expressed in words and actions. It produces practical results, for it is a vital element in the life. The life that is modeled by faith, look, develops a determination to advance, to go forward by following in the footsteps of Christ. In the Great Commission, found in Matthew 28, we are told to go. In fact, the first word is go. Let's look at Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore. Why? Because you're connected and committed and you want to commence the work of God. Go ye therefore and teach how many? All nations. That's everywhere. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Have you ever been at a running race before? You know, what do you hear the officials say? On your marks! And they all start to get there, right? Get set! That means get set, get ready. And then they go, go! And poof, everybody takes off running, right? But what I see many times is, is this. Ready? Ready? Get on your mark. Get your mark. That's, that's get your eyes on Jesus, right? Get set in Christ and in the truth, right? And, and get set in your commitment to Jesus Christ. So get ready, get your eyes on the mark, get set, and as there's no go. There's something wrong. If we're not actively witnessing for God, then we can very, we, 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 and, and just simply listening to God, we, and we're not commencing the work of God, something's wrong. Uh, get on your mark, get set, and we don't want to go. We're not doing something for God. Friends, if we're in that position, if you're not actively serving God, then simply go back and ask the Lord to reveal to you where you went wrong. It'll either be the first step or the second. It's that simple. Yet, it's a profound reality that God had showed me a while back. You see, if I am not actively, joyfully, excitingly working for God, then it's either a problem with my commitment or my connection to Him. And if my commitment is weak, then I just simply go back to step one and build my connection. That's it. Christian, you are oversimplifying this whole thing. No, brother. Perhaps you're overcomplicating this whole thing. And I've heard many people say, well, I, I, I don't know what to say. 
I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to speak. I don't know how to sing. I've never given a Bible study. Now let's look at Exodus 4.12 because uh, that's exactly what Moses was saying to God. And here's what God says to Moses. Now therefore, go. Moses, go. And I will be with thy mouth and I will teach thee what thou shalt say. You see, here's Moses. He's connected. He's committed, but he was fearful. He was willing, but he was fearful. So if you're willing and you're fearful, you need to give that to God because the Spirit of God in pla places no fear in man. But how can I go? Because I have the fruit of the Spirit in my converted life. And He has blessed me with the gifts of the Spirit to work for Him. But I'm, I'm afraid. How, how will people treat me? Well, you know, it's dangerous these days, Christian. And I mean, what if they say no? Well, let's look at Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. So we can go out there because God is a shield for each one of us. But what if I fail? What if I disappoint you, Lord? Again, let's look at Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. This is God speaking, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. In other words... Since God has, listen, worked in you, He will work through you for the outcome that He wants. Amen. So friends, it's not even about us except for us to make a decision. In the sense of, Lord, I surrender. And then, Lord, I'm going to learn. And then, Lord, I'm going to commit my ways to you. And, Lord, I'm going to allow you in my life. So the moment we allow Christ in our lives, it's no longer about me. It's about Christ living in me. And Kobe and I decided to step out by faith and commence our lives together. And we went to the marriage altar and gave our lives to each other unreservedly in our marriage. And we commenced our lives together. You see, we got married and said, I do. We connected, which led to commitment, which led to commencing our lives together at the marriage altar. With Kobe, I could have said, what if I say the wrong things? I mean, what if I don't do things right? What, what if she says no? I mean, that would be terrible. I mean, but what if we get married and I disappoint her? I could have been paralyzed by fear. I could have been handcuffed by fear of the unknown. And I would have never known the depth of my wife's love. But we went forward. And we have been greatly rewarded with a wonderful, deep marriage. With God we too can be so afraid of being in a covenant relationship with Him that we never move forward. I find many people around the world that they say that they love God, but they are not committed to Him, and they do nothing for Him. We will never start or be able to sustain for any real time our service for Him unless we meet Jesus at the cross and have accepted His saving blood, accepted the Holy Spirit's indwelling, we will never be moved or motivated to serve Him. The love shown on the cross of Calvary has motivated me personally to serve God full-time now for nearly 20 years. I don't say that to brag. I say that I'm just humbled that God would use me for that long. And of yes, there of course there have been ups and downs, highs and lows in serving God. And sometimes it hasn't been easy. But God continues to place dreams in my heart of how to better serve Him. Projects that will, by His grace, change lives. He gives the inspiration, and friends, we give the perspiration. <laughs> now, I'm not afraid of hard work. I've given God my word. I will serve you, Lord, until you come, or until I die. And friends, by God's grace, I'm a man of my word. What about you? Are you a person of your word? If I ever get to the place where I lose my God-given mission, and friends, I've been there, I simply check my connection. I reestablish it, recommit. That's why, God, that's why we're told, I die daily, right? It's a daily thing. Reestablish the connection and die daily and recommit. It truly is that simple and that powerful. But it's not always easy to overcome self and get back on your knees in front of the cross. But what is easy in this life, especially if it has real value? Have you ever thought about that? What really that, that has value is just like handed to you? 
Nothing. If ever there was a secret formula for being a Christian that honors God and brings glory to His name, then it is this. Connect, commit, commence. And when we have climbed these three steps, if you will, when we have embraced these things in our life, these spiritual truths in our lives, then we will reach that mountaintop experience, if you will, of conquering the fourth step that leads to eternal life. We connect to Christ. We commit our lives to Him. We commence the work of God and we conquer all for the prize, right? The prize is Christ, eternal life with Him forever. The conquering of self, the conquering of fears, the conquering of doubts, the conquering of, of uh, our old thinking, the conquering of sin in our lives. Conquering means to successfully overcome with a vital connection to Christ, a full commitment to serve Him, and actively being the hands and feet of Jesus, we accomplish everything that the Lord lays before us. Have you ever realized that all of the Lord's biddings are His enablings? In other words, if the Lord asks you to do something for Him, He will enable you to do it. He will give you the tools you need and the education, the money, the inspiration, and other people that share that vision. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. All things, my friends. Notice, we are only strong when we are connected. I can do all things through Christ. And Christ needs to be in me, working through me. Then I can do all things, right? I'm strong when I'm connected. But very soon, all of our money will be useless in this world. All of our properties will be taken away from us. All earthly support will be gone and the end has come. So friends, we need to be looking up. We need to be searching our souls and saying, Lord, am I in the faith? Getting on our knees and praying and looking in His Word and studying His Word. Becoming filled with the Holy Spirit. I love 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, starting in verse 16. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Friends, the end is coming soon. Just look at what's happening in the world. Look at what's happening in the church. Look what's happening in our own homes. Please connect, commit, commence, and conquer four foundational steps that will set you ablaze for the Lord. The Holy Spirit is ready. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you to connect to the truth, Jesus Christ. To see that He died to forgive you for your sins and to pronounce you redeemed from eternal death. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you to commit your life to be set aside, to be worked by Him, and equipped to do a holy work in saving lost souls. The Holy Spirit is waiting to place opportunities in front of us to actively witness to them of the coming judgment, friends, of God's righteousness, of salvation through Jesus Christ and His soon coming God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit are waiting to lead us to a place of consistent victory over everything that besets us. For me, I say, I do. I will be your bride, dear Jesus. I will allow you to capture my heart. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Imagine living a life like this. What could God do through you? Will you let Him come in and sup with you? He's knocking on the door of your heart. Please, dear friend, let Him in. You won't be sorry you did. He's knocking on your heart. Now, let's go back to our opening verse, Revelation 12, 11, and we're going to find the four steps in one verse. And we, they, the church, the remnant, the church overcame. Now, what word would that be? Another word for overcame. They conquered. Amen? And they conquered 
him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb. You see, they, they were connected to Christ through the Word. You understand? And they, they connected their lives to Christ. So they connected to Christ. So they overcame, or they conquered, and they connected to the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, wait a minute, what's that? That means that they went out and they testified of what God was doing in them and had done in them. Amen. You see, we conquer. You see, we, we go to the blood of the Lamb and we say, Jesus, I need you. I need to connect to you. And then we go out and commence the work of God. And they love not their lives unto the death. Why? They were fully committed, my friends. <laughs> they were committed. They overcame. They conquered all by the blood of the Lamb. Look what God has done in our lives, my friends. If we allow Him to actually good, do His good work in us, have you allowed Him to do that good work in you? God can do it. Why? Because we're committed fully to the Lord. We say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. See, I trust that God can and will do in this very person if I simply let the Lord and I open my heart to Him, I believe He can do in me what He says and finish in me what He says. Let's look at Philippians 1.6. Being confident of this very thing, that He, God, which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Connect to Jesus, my friends. Commit your life to Him. Commence the work of God that God gives you and conquer everything in your life because Christ is in you, living through you. This is how we have eternal life with God. Let's go back to our illustration one last time. So, we have to connect to Jesus Christ. The next step is to commit your life to Him. The third is to, of course, commence the work of God. And fourth is to, of course, we get to conquer all. And friends, as we reach higher and higher, we're going to become more and more like Christ in our character because Christ is living in us, so it's Christ's character being wrought out through me. Amen. Now here's the fundamental truth you cannot miss. Notice that the whole Christian experience is built upon our connection to Jesus. It's all built on the connection of Jesus. All of these sit upon the foundation of our connection to Jesus. And friends, if we don't have a solid foundation, then our Christian experience is going to crumble and it's all going to fall apart. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. I will connect and I will commit and I will commence and finally, through the grace of God, I will conquer. Will you say, I do to Jesus? I hope so. God bless you and may your names remain in the book of life. We'll be right back with Talk After the Talk. Travel with Christian Bernal as he ministers around the world. Highways and Byways features testimonies, personal stories, and behind-the-scenes footage of a traveling speaker and singer. Watch as lives are changed as a result of sharing God's Word. Visit blog.shepcall.com today. Welcome back, friends. This is my favorite part of the program because my beautiful wife gets to join me and I get to have her here with me. Thank you, sweetheart, for being here. It's good um, to be here again. <laughs> amen. So uh, this is the section that we entitled Talk After Talk. And um, today's message, as you uh, will remember, was the four steps to eternal life. Now, what we don't want you to be thinking is that, okay, Christian Berdahl or Shepherd's Call Ministry has laid out these four steps. <laughs> and when I accomplish these four steps, I'm going to be in heaven, you know, or, <laughs> or I'm going to earn my way to heaven. That's not what this is about. Please understand this is not about earning your way to heaven. There's no way we can earn our ways to, our, our ways to heaven. Right. We, we literally receive salvation as a gift. From that gift, we unpack it. Jesus Christ is the gift. Yes. He's the salvation that we have. And, and as we unpack that gift, if you will, then God starts to bless our lives. He starts to, to change things because we dig and we find out more about God. And so it was a way of breaking down Really, if I'm going wrong in my walk, if something's not right, I ask God, Lord, show me a way to I can get back on the right track. And it went 
back to that connection. Yeah, well, and it would go back to that connection because like you said, really the gift of salvation, it is Jesus. He is the gift. Amen. It's what he did. So it's our connection yes. to him, right. which if we go back and look at, mm -hmm. at the steps again, how it is the connection to Jesus, like you said, it is the foundation. Yes. It is what it's all built on. If any of this is not happening, there's a problem here. Right. Or if some of this is going on, but we don't have this, it's not for any good purpose. Exactly. It's, it's empty. It is empty. It it's an empty experience, and that's I've been is, there, and yeah. it's, it's pathetic. Yeah, it's a tough thing. And one thing that struck me when you were talking about these is the fact that they are all action words. Mm, yes. And so much of the Bible is full of action mm -hmm. all over, and so it's a really important point, and to look at them and to know that that part that we have to play, mm -hmm. that we have to connect, we have to commit, we mm -hmm. have to have some movement here. If we're going to have uh, results and growth in our life. Yeah, if we're going to experience all the promises and the blessings and the things that God has mm -hmm. in His Word for us, if we want to experience those things in our lives, then we have to act, we have to take part That's in the experience. That's a good point because too many people are stuck and they, they settle for a mediocre Christian experience right. where they think they're experiencing the blessings of God, yeah. yet they're not driven to obedience. They're not driven to all these things that God wants to help them mm -hmm. uh, uh, to uh, have in their life in a consistent way. And when we have that, then we go, oh, I thought I was blessed before. Right. Wow, God has that's all of true. this. Amen. And yeah. that's what happens as we connect and commit and commence our life. God goes, I have more for you. I have more. Doesn't mean bigger houses, bigger cars, bigger bank accounts. No. It means I have more personal growth. I have more of field and labor for you. I have better relationships for you. Right. Plus, plus, plus. Exactly. And that, because we work for God and many people who go to church are active in their churches, mm -hmm. um, we're commencing. A lot of us are commencing and mm -hmm. we get up there, but then we find when we go home, there's something missing in mm. our personal life. Right. And so you talking about this being the foundation and something to go back to, it's been so instrumental in my walk Yes. for whenever it starts feeling empty or mm -hmm. it starts feeling like I'm going through the motions. Going through the motions, yeah. You think, okay, and we've been there. Yeah, what's wrong? Okay, let's go back to connect. And I used to have a note that was on the desktop of my computer, mm -hmm. so I'd come up and it says, it does not take long for a person who is not trying to stay close to God mm. to find himself far away. Wow, exactly. And I had to remind myself, if I'm not putting in the effort, mm -hmm. if I'm not on a daily basis working towards that relationship of connecting to Jesus, then it won't take very long and I'll find myself far away from him. And isn't that so true? How many times have you been on fire for the mm -hmm. Lord and before you know it, you turn around and go, how did I what wind happened? up here? Yeah, why is this experience is so different? Why am I in this valley? Why does God seem so far away? Yeah. Now, is it that because God has left us or is it because we have left God? Oh, no, it, it always comes down to us. God never on leaves those us. Things. Yeah, now, he, us. he may have periods of longer silence with us, things like that, because he's stretching our faith. Mm. He's helping us to persevere and sure. to wrestle with him a little bit to grow us, but he never leaves us. Uh, you know, Amen. he never walks away. And let's just look at Jeremiah 29 again. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected mm -hmm. end. Thank, I love Conquering. that. That's Conquering. Conquering, that's right. Yeah. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. Now, what step is pray unto me? That's Connection, connecting. Yeah. right? And it's an action. And it's an action. And I will hearken unto you. So when you pray, God's promise, I'll listen to you, yeah. Kobe. I'm, I'm listening. And ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now, what yeah. step is that? You've got to be committed. You, all your you, heart is, is a commitment. That's right. So there it is. When you search me with all your heart, you're going to find me and I'll yeah. answer you. And he's all in. He's already all in. He's already all in. He's Amen. already saying, I, I'm saying to you, I'm here 100% yes. for you. Amen. As soon as you want to do these things and you want to come and have action with me, then I'm going to give you, you know, action That's right. as well. And he's saying, as soon as you want my blessings, as soon as you want me in your life, mm -hmm. I am here for you. Yeah. All in for you. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's awesome. 
that's um, that's, that's good news. That is good it's news. It's really good news. And that is the good news. Yeah, because no matter how far we may have gone down the wrong road, mm -hmm. we can always turn around. That's right. And in those moments you turn around, God's there. So it's our choice to just turn back to connect again. That's right. To go back to that basic step of connection. And I've said it like this before, no matter how far we have strayed from God, and there have been people that have really strayed from mm -hmm. God, we are never out of the reach of God. Yeah. We're never out of that out yeah. of the reach of God. However, the moment I start to turn toward God, he goes, "I got gotcha. you." Yeah. But if I keep running away from him, then I've made my decision and God will not be able to work in my life right. because God doesn't force. Yeah. Now we got to move on. We got about yeah, three and a half Philippians minutes. Yeah, Philippians 1 6. <laughs> three and a half Being minutes. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Wow. So he's all in for us. When we go all in, we have that promise, that assurance That's that right. he's going to continue working with us no matter how many times mm. we fall, no matter how many struggles we have, or mm. how many times we, you know, wrestle with the same kind of things. Yep. He's saying, I, I'm here, I promise, I'm going to keep laboring with you and mm -hmm. working with you until the day of Jesus Christ, Amen. until we're saved. And that's, that's a promise we can hold on to. So then, if God is willing to stay in the fight for us, then it's up to us to be willing to stay in the fight. Yeah. And sometimes it's not easy, like with right. the long years, now eight years of your physical problems and some of the other issues now that I'm having, all this kind of stuff. And, and then just the misunderstanding sometimes of, of people and the struggle and not being able to keep up with all the work or whatever. And all of a sudden you're like, uh, God's going, I got you, I got you. I'm yeah. not going to let you sink, right? So if we're willing to stay in, God already is. That's right. I That's love that. That's right. It's beautiful. Well, we're uh, kind of running out of time from okay. a lot of the things that I was thinking about talking. The preacher went a little bit long. Came I'm up sorry in, about uh, that. in my mind, but. Um, so hit him real quick. Go ahead. Well, another thing that this message stirs up in me is the depth of relationship that we need to have with Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's been a struggle for me in times because you liken it to a relationship with a best friend. He needs mm -hmm. to be, you know, what a friend we have in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this best friend, and I'm just thinking, gosh, I don't know how to have that. Like, I know how you're my best friend. Mm -hmm. I know how we interact, and I understand that that's important. Um, but something that I had read a long time ago, it says, your best friend is the person who brings out of you the best that is within you. Mm. And it just struck me when I was listening to you today. I was yeah. like, that applies to Christ more than any earthly person. I mean, you Amen. bring out good in me, and you push me to do good, but for him, he is, he's the definition of a best friend there. <laughs> that's right. Because he knows what's good within me that I don't even know is there, or the best that's within me, and so he knows what to bring out. Let's take it a step further. God wants to live in you. Christ wants to live in you, mm -hmm. and isn't he already the best? Yeah. So literally, he can, if we allow him to be within us, like that, what we read uh, with, the, uh, with the vine and the branch, right. right? If I and you and you and me, then what happens is Christ is living in me, so Christ, our best friend, is bringing out the best in us because yeah. He's working through us. All right. Amen. Oh, that's a, a whole other level of Amen. it I hadn't even so thought of. So <laughs> when Christ is living in me and living in you, right, mm -hmm. then I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Yes. Christ is in me, my best friend. Right. And the best friend always brings out the best in us. You know, a great thought to just kind of wrap this up mm -hmm. is as wonderful as it is, to have Jesus' blessings. And that's wonderful. It's even more wonderful to have Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, and God's blessings are everywhere. But to have Jesus yeah. is the best gift ever. Yeah. And Christ wants to give himself to each one of us, friends. And so we want to encourage you to enter into a relationship to Christ, learn how to connect with him, because it'll change your life forever. Friends, we want to thank you for your prayers, encouraging letters, and the financial support that you send each month. Without you partnering with us, we would not be able to fulfill the work that God has laid before us. We pray that you have been blessed by Christian's message today. And if you would like to receive your own copy, simply contact us at shepherdscall.com or phone us at 505-286-5522. Until next time, may your heart stay open to the Shepherd's Call.